hunt him! The Pokemon Killer! <laughs> oh, it's good, but like... <laughs> uh, well, it's good. Temtem is a Pokemon-like MMO with loads of beasties called Temtem, which can be tamed by tamers. As of right now, early February 2021, they are still rolling out more Temtem in small chunks, but if we waited for them to finish, we'd never do this video. Imagine waiting on a Mario timeline video, waiting for Nintendo to finish making Mario games. Yeah, it's stupid. So, in today's video, we're going to explain every Temtem, mainly their name etymology, what they are based on, and maybe why they are the type that they are. So, let's get started. Hello, human. It is I, the human Loxton, from the future. And boy, personal information theft is still a real problem. A blast from the past, you could say, because these days, in the future, people tend to use today's sponsor, Privacy.com. Privacy.com allows you to purchase all the oddities and normalities you want with virtual payment information. No longer will you have to put your vital credit card information on all of those sketchy sites that you aren't sure you can trust. Heck, sometimes even the trustworthy ones get hacked. But Privacy.com has it handled, keeping your banking information a secret. Plus, if you make an account using my link below, privacy.com slash Loxton, you get $5 just for making a purchase. That's enough for a booster pack. Oh gosh, this one's worth like 15 bucks. The best part is that the virtual cards set up with privacy.com still work perfectly, just like your normal cards, just without your actual name and bank on it. And you can set a monthly spending limit on each one, or a spending limit for eternity. There's even limits you can set so your subscription services can't hike up prices without you knowing. And they have plenty of plans to choose from as well. From your run-of-the-mill users to business professionals getting up to 1% back on every purchase. So take it from future me and save your own butt. Head to privacy.com slash Loxton and sign up for an account. New customers will automatically get $5 to spend on their first purchase. Go to privacy.com slash Loxton and sign up now. Oh yeah, Temtem is made by Crema, which is a Spanish studio, so expect a lot of Spanish influence in the names, as well as other European languages. In other words, I'm sorry in advance for mispronouncing everything. Ori is your rival's adorable little robot Temtem. It's so cute! It looks almost like a bush baby android or a stitch bot, maybe a lemur thing. Its name comes from electronic and orejas, which is Spanish for ear. And it being digital type is pretty self-explanatory, it's a little android. A little android that evolves into Zalbion, which gets its name from the Chinese words for megabyte and mutation. Platypet is one of the more well-known Temtem, and it's clearly a platypus with cheeks that look vaguely like bouncing bubbles. Its name comes from platypus and pet clearly, and it's water toxic type as platypus are aquatic mammals that are also one of the few rare mammals with venom. It evolves into platox, a toxic platypus, which really is just it but angrier, and its evolution follows suit. It gets ripped as platymus, an enormous toxic platypus. Those forearms. Charles Termwin, the Temtem equivalent of Charles Darwin, describes it as platox, but more so. And I love that because that's really what it is. It just gets bigger. Now, ain't Swally cute? It's a little swaddled thing. Also, Ali is wing in Italian. I do like how it's both a caterpillar and a cocoon at the same time, and its single antenna and coloration point me to this guy, the Catalpa Sphinx. It evolves into Loli, which is a moth butterfly thing with lots of wings, hence the name. Lots of alis, Italian for wing. No real butterflies or moths have this many wings. That's a creative liberty that I think makes this design stand out more. It's extra flowy now. But there are plenty of butterflies and moths with this yellow ringed pattern. And being nature wind type is pretty fitting of a flying bug. I really like Teteru because you can't exactly pinpoint what it's based on. A lot like Ori. It's like a panda rabbit groundhog with antennas. Its luma color almost makes it look like a dog or a guinea pig. So let's just say cute generic mammal. I mean, its name doesn't even help here. It's literally just the Japanese word for stand or erect, since it stands on its hind legs and all. Plus, it's neutral type, so even that doesn't help us. Honestly, as long as it looks good, it doesn't have to reference any one thing. But still, this was the second incredibly original monster design, and we've barely even gotten started. So I had to reach out to the devs and ask them about their designing process, and I actually heard back from the director himself, who had this to say. When we design a new Temtem, we don't usually design based on something real or animal-like. Sure, there are some of them that are close to some animal forms, but the initial thought process behind them usually doesn't start there. We usually start from a gameplay standpoint. Do we need a single Evo? Do we need a three line? Which typings do we want? 
Does it need to be aggressive or more support-oriented? Etc. When we have that, the artists involved in the Temtem creation start doing sketches with that idea in mind. Sometimes these sketches can resemble some known animal forms, but we usually always try to do things that are unique and can't be related to anything existing. That is where things like Tateru and Grumville were born. And oh boy, when we get to Grumville, you'll see even more of what I mean. But moving on, with the next line, it's pretty easy to see its main influence. The wind type Pajaro's name is just Spanish for bird, but typed out as if it has the accent from southern Spain. At least, that's what the devs say. And it's just a little red bird wearing a leaf mask. Birds often use leaves to craft things, like nests. The color and feather point on its head makes me think of a cardinal, which I'm pretty sure is the main inspiration here because the entire line has it. Paharic, whose name is just Big Bird in Spanish, and Grandpa, which is just Spanish for Grand Bird. But it also sounds like Grandpa, doesn't it? Your Gramps? That does explain why its face shape and feathers give it a more aged look. It's an older bird. Now, Ampling! It's an electric fawn, meaning it's a young deer, which is where we get the name from. Ampere, the unit of electrical current, and Fawnling, a young deer. Following the theme, the next evolution is Amphater, which adds Satyr to the name, the mythological creature that's part man, part goat. It gains the nature type here, as satyrs are forest creatures often classified as woodland gods, beings of nature themselves. But then again, so are fawns. I'm a fawn, you dork. Hmm. Bun bun! Okay, let's take a second to really think. Bun bun. Do you think it's a bunny? Well, the second bun could be from the Vietnamese bun, which means mud, hence the earth typing, along with rabbits typically being burrowers. Its crystal paws seemingly help it dig in the softer earth. Mudrid, the evolution, is also named after mud, and Leoporid, which is the family genus of most rabbits and hares, from cottontails to arctic hares. Interestingly enough, their Tempedia entry goes over how it's hardy in cold temperatures. Hi Dodie is the cutest little bean pod caterpillar thing I think, that I've ever seen. It loves to climb high and hide away from other creatures, which is likely where the high in its name comes from, high and hide. And Dodie is a corruption of sorts of the word body. You flip that B around, Dodie. Or Dottie, maybe. It hides its body high up. It evolves into Taifu, whose name is a corruption of Tofu and possibly Tai, as in Tai Chi, short for Tai Ji Quan, sometimes colloquially known as shadow boxing. Thanks to its extra set of arms, it's always trailing its own movements, no? And being a sort of bug, soybean, nature type works. FOMU! Cute! It comes from foam, as it is covered in foam, and constantly leaving trails of mist everywhere. It's like a baby cloud whale, but a narwhal! And it's eventually able to turn that foamy steam into wings, as it evolves into whiplump, a combo of whip, wing, or wind, and plump and maybe pump, whipping up wings out of its foam to lift its little plump body, thus gaining the wind type? Yeah. It's also a lot more draconic now, perhaps referencing cloud dragons. Scale is a squirrel weasel-like Temtem that has an extremely powerful tail, which is where half of its name comes from, tail. The Ska then coming from Skaven, the half-man, half-rat fantasy creatures of Warhammer. I mean, Scale has a beard, uh, but also from Old Saxon, Skaven, which means to scratch, and Craven, which is to be cowardly and timid, like rats. Its evolution shares the same sk with Scale. However, ignoring its tail, it now learns how to punch real good, becoming Skunch, a squirrel who punch. Game of the year, uh, or I mean, uh, Goaty, but wait, that's actually a part of its etymology. Uh, according to the Tempedia, it's voted best Temtem every year. That's hilarious. Well, Goaty is also the diminutive form of goat. A little Goaty Woaty, which evolves into a gross adult goat named Mouflank. Uh, possibly from mountain, as in mountain goats, or Moflon, a species of goat thought to be the ancestor to all domestic goats. And also, Flank the side of the body between the ribs and the hip. Nice and tasty, especially from goats. Its horns are kind of crazy though, so instead of flank, it could just be the ANK part from Ankole Watusi, a breed of cattle with humongous horns. Rolder, 
The rhino built like a boulder. Straightforward. It looks like the side of a plateau or the layers of crust in the earth. Either way, rhinos have very rough and tough armor. So this is perfect. Hushik, one of the starters of the game. It's named after Houdini and possibly a mystic or psychic. I'm leaning towards psychic because of its mental typing. Less magic, more brain. Also, it's kind of chic looking, right? No? Uh, well, it evolves into Tental, a tentacle-waving mental type. And finally, we have Nagais, from Wise and Naga, the snake-like creatures of myth, sometimes with tentacle hair made of snakes. However, it really just means serpent-like. Also, along with being snakes, Naga are also normally seen with treasure hidden underwater or rivers or lakes, wet-themed stuff, which is why Nagais gets water as its second type. And, come to think of it, you could see these guys as mermen, but like Ursula mermen with octopus parts, or if Medusa was an octopus person. Notably, also, its Tempedia entry says that it's known for giving cryptic advice to folk heroes, an early example of the traditional association of this species with wisdom, insight, and spirituality. So it sounds like a meditating oracle or a guru, which its name could also reference with namaste meditation, or Phil, a nature toxic type, which seems counterintuitive. However, learning more about it, you'd see that it's just able to filter out toxins and live in noxious areas. Areas. Its naming scheme is based on chlorophyll, the typical plant juice stuff that allows photosynthesis. Common in plant type creatures, I'm going to assume. And Ormer is from Old Norse, meaning serpent, hence Ouroboros also. And being based on a hydra, it could be seen as a dragon from Greek myth. The monster had a crest and three tongues, much like its evolution. Either way, Orpheon, the legendary musician, put the creature to sleep for Jason to seal the golden fleece. So Orphil's Orph could also be a reference to that as well. Its evolution is a three-headed Orphil named Nid Yggdrasil, as in Yggdrasil and Nidhogg, both from Old Norse, the Tree of Life and the Serpentine Dragon who gnaws on the Tree of Life, respectively, both the life-giving nature and the toxin. Perfect for its type. Honestly, this one is way deep and I love it. Banappy! is supposedly a goat cow deer thing. It's an odd-looking one. Banappy sounds like a bug snacks. Scoopy Banoopy. But it could be a corruption of Bambi, a popular deer character, or it could be from Banteng, Indonesian for bowl. Either way, we can be sure that its api at the end means fire in Indonesian. Its evolution, Kapire, is more of a goat, and Kap comes from Capris, the genus name of the goat family. And pyre is simply a heap of combustible material typically used to burn bodies for funerals. Also, the entire name sort of sounds like a shortened corruption of campfire, and forest fires are dangerous, which may be why a naturey goat thing is fire type. Well, that, and so that when Pokemon inevitably does a fire goat starter to keep up with the Zodiac, they can say they did it first. Lapinite! It's a carbuncle! A folktale creature from 16th century South America. Basically a rabbit, fox, cat, thing that's usually white or teal and has a magical gem in its forehead. They're found in all sorts of media. The name likely comes from ite, the suffix of minerals, typically, and lapin is French for bunny or rabbit. It could also be a pun about laponite, which is a synthetic clear goopy clay, and again, rabbits like burrowing, crystals and minerals are found underground often, typing explained. Its evolution, azure rock, is azure and rock referencing its blue head of rock. And its third evolution is Xenoreth, who looks even more like an alien-esque thing, like a silicon-based intelligent life form. Do you get that kind of vibe from it? I really do. I can't pinpoint why, but I do. Now, I'm not sure if you, you specifically watching this video, know much about painting, but a zenith is typically your light source when painting objects. Zenith being the point at which the sun is at its highest, so the light is directly above the subjects. It typically is used meaning highest or tallest, and this, being the third and final evolution, is both the tallest and highest in the chain. Zenith also has a lot of spiritual meanings, especially in the crystal healing community, hence that connection. Ooh, and they pulled a sneaky on ya. They added or into the middle of the name. Ha! Or. Bigu. <laughs> More like Big Ew, am I right? <laughs> Uh, Bigu is a rather large gastropod, hence big, but it could also be named after Bigaro, Spanish for winkle. Uh, no, not wrinkle. I said winkle, which just so happens to be a small herbivorous shore-dwelling mollusk with a spiral shell, just like Bigu. Now, Babawa is a totally different creature, much cuter. 
Baba is Spanish for slime, perfect for slugs and snails, and Agua is a funny spelling of agua, meaning water, in Spanish, reflecting the water type being added in this evolution. Because it's watery, slime, yeah. Kaku is a small little cutie that hides in its little flower petals that look a bit like they belong to a Rafflesia. Its name comes from Japanese, Kakusarata, meaning hidden or protected. It could also mean sheltered. You get the idea. Its evolution, Saku, has come out of its shell, to say, being much larger and less of a shy little guy. Saku's name is just Saku, which means bloom in Japanese, like a sakura cherry tree. And together, they can cack you in the sack. Ooh! Bad joke? Valash is a fighting bipedal badger thing with crystal gauntlets. It's named after Slash, as it uses sharp sword-like gauntlets to fight, and the Ba comes from Badenite, a red crystal found in Mexico. It shares the same reddish coloration as the gauntlets. Also, badgers fight, badgers burrow, crystals are in the ground, crystal type. Barnshe is a mysterious owl-like creature, possibly named after barn owls, as this creature does share their large heads and sharp talons. The next part of the name could be from Banshee, as in the ghost-like creatures that predict death. Such prediction then possibly explaining the mental type here. Also, it's believed that the cries of certain birds of prey is where the legend of the Banshee came from, and many ancient cultures associated an owl's call with a call for death. An omen. Gyalis is a crystal praying mantis monster with what looks like floating crown laser platforms. The name comes from Gyalis Meno, referencing its body. Oh yeah, Gyalis Meno means polished or glossed in Greek. And you mix that with mantis. Plus, I mean, its face is even reminiscent of Greek era helmet designs, with the slope of the face and the brow being much more pointy. And praying mantises having a hard carapace and a kung fu style named after them, it makes sense that crystal melee would be its type. Oclera. Eyes inside of your mouth seem like an evolutionary disadvantage, but I guess you get to eat a lot of seafood. <laughs> its name comes from Latin, and it's all about eyes and hiding. Hidden in Latin is occultatum, like the occult, it's hidden. And of course there's optics and ocular systems. And the lura in the name is Latin for mouth, making its name sort of hidden mouth, or eyes hidden in mouth. And some art of the creature shows that those are indeed its eyes, but the crystals around here are not its true mouth. It has a smaller mouth, more in line with where a creature like this would realistically have one. But its face is hidden in there, just as crystals are hidden underground. Its evolution, Mix, is named more conventionally with it being based off of a myth of Nyx, the daughter of Chaos, or the female personification of the night, which goes along with its pre-evo of hiding. Its Tempedia entry also talks about its darkness. However, Nyx is also a mixture of Mystic, relating to its new mental typing, and its crystals now more closely resembling a hood, like a hooded mage's robe. Ryber is a lion, and is named as such in Japanese. R's and L's are sort of mixed in certain Japanese dialects. Lion, Ryan, and you mix that with fire, or ember, Ryber. Its evolution is Rays, with the same Ryan base, but with Blaze as the second part. And as a whole, it sounds like Rays. To raise a village is to burn it to the ground. The third evolution is Rykan. Not Rain Can, Rykan. Ryan again for Lion, and this one looks the part with its big fiery mane. And the second part of its name comes from Volcano, the Big Fire. Lions are often associated with fire due to their big fiery manes. That's why it's in like everything. Pukey! I love it! It's a piranha whale shark baby! Its name comes from the Hawaiian word for dorsal fin. Pua, and small. Iki. And it's not wrong with it having a small dorsal fin and being small in general. Unlike its evolution, Piranayat. In fact, it's part of its name. Giant. Because it's so much bigger than Pukey. And the beginning of its name seems to come from piranha. So it's a giant piranha. An apt name. Osuchi, Osukan, and Osuchai. These might be just some of the most, it's just two words, names. Osuchi is Osu and Chi. Osu pronounced Os. Oh, hang on. <laughs> so, uh. Oschi, Oskan, Oskai. There you go. Os is a catch all term used in most Japanese dojos. Os means push directly, but it is used in a way that makes it sort of slang for multiple things. It could mean hello or look at this. It's almost like in English the way we say, hey, you see someone you know on the street? Hey, you want to get someone to look at a thing? Hey, you upset about something? Hey, 
Oh man, I'm about to go on a tangent, aren't I? The theory as to why us is so universal isn't quite understood. Uh, there are a few theories, though. It could just be a shortened, manly version of ohayos, eventually becoming osu, or os for short. Or it could be from the saying osu no senshin, meaning push the pain away, endure pain, take it like a man essentially. There are a lot of rules about using it in conversation in Japanese, but that last one fits really well with these Temtem, being melee type. However, that's only half of their names. For Oschi, we have Chi, which is Earth in Japanese, referring to its dirt powers. Oskan is then Kan, from the Japanese rooster crest. Kaikan, this time referring to its large crest-like protrusion on its head. And finally, Oskai, with Kai being from Tatakai. Japanese for battle, typically in verb form, so to fight. Which makes sense, as this third evolution is a rather aggressive looking biggin, right? Sorry, Pat. AKA not far-fetched. It's a duck with a shell on its head. The ultimate life form, really. Sai Pat comes from pato, meaning duck in Spanish, and Sai, a favorite weapon of a Mr. Ralph, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turt. And also the weird red thing that it's holding. It's a fighting duck, melee water. It's perfect, I guess. I like how the shell makes it look like both a knight's helmet and also a peasant's casa. Pico is a cute little lizard friend named after Gecko and Pyre, and it evolves into Drakash, named after Drakes, a form of dragons that typically don't have wings, Drak, dragon in Afrikaans, which could also be used here because of the fire skink found in the forests of Western Africa. See, they sort of have similarities, and that's why they're fire type. Earth too. They like to burrow. Uh, where was I? Uh, and Drakash has some lava-esque elements, so fire earth. There you go. Uh, the name also has ash. There you go. That was the point I was forgetting. Crystal, Cheryl, and Tortonite are also starter Temtem, and their names are rather straightforward. Crystal is named after its type, Crystal. However, it is spelled wrong because they mixed it with the word turtle, Crystal, Crystal, yeah. Uh, Cheryl it just sounds like the name Cheryl or Harold with an S in front of it. The extremely common boring man name because it's a common starter Pokemon. I guess that's good. It also has emerald and shell in there because uh, it's green and has a shell made of emerald. Uh, and then Tortonite plays Fortnite, but really the it comes from the mineral suffix, typically applied to gemstones. And it may specifically be Torbernite, a green and radioactive mineral, which is why I believe it is toxic type. It's radioactive. Oh, and also tortoise is in there because it magically goes from being a turtle to a tortoise, just like another starter creature. Hocus and Pocus are named after the magical words that aren't please and thank you. No, 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 they are the other magical words. Hocus Pocus, which some think was fake Latin, something no one understood, but heard of, invoking something similar to hoc est corpus meum, which was used in religious ceremonies, stealing the hoc est and corpus to eventually become hocus pocus. And on top of just being witchy magic words, they can also refer to the supernatural in general, witchcraft and ghosts and all, which I feel fully encompasses the look of these two. They are sort of a personification of their namesake. Sparzy! It's spark and crazy! I mean, look at that face! Does that say mentally stable to you? This guy's whole look and demeanor just screams the wacky, high-energy cartoon character trope. Think Woody Woodpecker, Scrat, the, the Squirrel from Over the Hedge, Rabbids, that nature. Well fitting of the electric type because <laughs> all the, 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 the twitchy and they're like, whoa! The whole wacky thing. Mushi is a diminutive cutesy way of saying mushroom, like a mushy wooshy or mushy. It could also be from shy as it is a rather shy Temtem, but when it evolves, it loses that and becomes Mushuk a mushroom with a nasty left hook. A hook is a type of punch in which you rotate your core muscles to put more weight into the punch, which makes sense because it gains melee type. Magmus is a hammerhead lava shark, possibly based off of land sharks, but with a fun, fiery twist. And maybe throw some tiger shark in there. Magmus is a mix of the words magma, ignis, which refers to burning gas, it's ignited, and mallet, or malleus, which is hammer in Latin. It's where we get the word mallet, actually. Its evolution, Mastion, follows similarly with ma coming from malleus, or mallet, and combustion, which is combustion in Latin. Umishi is a small sea slug-like creature named after umi, meaning sea in Japanese, and tenshi, which is angel, referencing the sea angel, a small marine-like creature that floats in the ocean and look like tiny little humanoid angels. But unfortunately, they aren't. They are sea slugs. The evolved form, ukama, is also named with Japanese words. Umi, again sea, but this time it's kama, which is sickle or scythe, referencing the tail of ukama. 
but it also could be referencing Kami, meaning a higher spirit or a god. And being the fastest of all Temtem makes it the god of speed. Ragnit is a robot made of two large horseshoe magnets. It's named after Ray, as in a beam of light, and Magnet. Not much else is known about it right now, though. It's a very new Temtem. Now, the last and certainly the least starter Temtem is Smezi, which is an orange melee monkey. And yes, monkey, it has a long tail, okay? I checked. Even though its name combines smack and chimpanzee, it is a monkey, not a chimp. Baboong, or Babong. It's longer than Z. It's baboon and bonk mixed with young, or really anything that ends in G. Bong is a sound of something being hit, so there you go. And finally, we get to Size Munch, a seismic simian that can punch. Now, on top of being melee type, it's earth type, which could mean it's based loosely on Sun Wukong of Chinese myth, the orange kung fu monkey who was born from a rock. Its face and hairstyle screams Kung Fu Master to me, and some highly skilled Kung Fu Masters practice by splitting rocks. There's also the trope of people training in high-end Eastern fighting techniques using weighted things, weights on their wrists and ankles, just like this. Zizar sure is bizarre. It says it's an earthworm Temtem, but that is the most stylized earthworm I've ever seen. Anyway. The word Zizar is Basque, coming from the country Basque, near the northwestern parts of Spain. In their language, Zizar is actually just worm, so its name is literally worm, but different. Though it could also be a play on Wirum, sometimes pronounced worm. Wirum are long, serpentine dragons that often burrowed into the earth. So Zizar is an earth Wirum. Momo is a Kickstarter backer created Temtem, designed by Kyle. That's their name, okay? As for Momo's name, Kyle let it be up to Crema. Who named it Momo? Possibly because in-game, these dog-like Temtems were domesticated near Lake Moyo. Typically, in nameology, Momo means peach or apricot, coming from the Japanese name Momoko. But actually, it's been stated that they named the dog after Guillermo Andrade's Shiba Inu dog, who shares the name Momo. And if it's a Shiba, it's probably peach apricot colored. Momo is just like a Shiba husky mix, isn't it? I mean, look at its luma color. Kuri is not named after the delicious food. In Japanese, Kuri means chestnut, which may be a reference to its color and little helmet face. Kura in Hausa means hyena, which is what Kuri is supposed to be, but with a bony head. Hausa is a Chadic language spoken by the Hausa people, the largest native ethnic group in Africa, where hyenas live. And if you take the word Kura and make it babyified in a diminutive form, you get Kuri. But its Evo, Kaurin, which isn't Karen, uses the non-diminutive Kura and the Hausa word Haurin Giwa, which means ivory. Ivory being what elephant tusks are made of. So possibly it's not just wearing bones that it found, but it actually has grown these bones like elephant tusks. And considering that it is both bones and hyenas, which live in dens, earth type works great. Spreel is named after a sprig, which means a small or young twig or sprout. And a petiole is the small part that connects a leaf to a branch. And these being the name origins makes perfect sense because this is a very young plant naturey temtem. It also sounds a bit like spring roll, which are delicious, and being caterpillar shaped fits with all that. But what's odd is that it evolves into a deer. Interesting. Dindre comes from deer and cendre, which is French for ash tree. Ash trees have leaves that are very similar in appearance to these Temtem's leaves. Alternatively though, the word dendro means pertaining to a tree, like in dendrology the study of trees. Then its final evolution is Cernif, which gets its name from Leaf and possibly Cernunos. Cernunos is the Gaelic god of beasts and wild places, often called the Horned One due to its antler-like horns. And speaking of mythical things, Spriggans also come to mind with Spiral's name now too. Either way, lots of nature spirit stuff, which deer are often associated with. So nature type is perfect. Toxolotl talks a lot. That's not the point of its name though. It's a toxic type axolotl, which is where its name comes from. It evolves into noxolotl, which is a noxious axolotl. Pretty simple stuff. And while axolotls aren't, numerous other salamanders are poisonous. Also, these are the weirdest looking axolotls I've ever seen. They're like, let's take an amphibian and make it mammalian. Was that the idea? To make an alien dog, perhaps this is the old try to be unique with no one creature slash thing in mind design philosophy, again, that the director mentioned to me. 
According to the Tempedia, they are born of the foulest depths of Zolot, meaning that the Zolot part of its name could just be a reference to the place they are found, rather than specifically being an axolotl. Though they do have the right kind of face shape and like frills coming from the face, though the frills are like rainbow dreads. It's very unique. Blues and Goodler are both named after oozes and goop, respectively. Classic RPG monsters. Slimes. However, Blues also gets its name from Blob, while Goodler may be pulling from Ghoul or Goo, and even Elder, and possibly even Doodle, as its shape is sort of amorphous like. Oh, and Ghouls are typically very ravenous zombie ghost things that typically eat flesh. And these guys just look like gluttons. <laughs> Zephyroth! Another Kickstarter designed Temtem by Soma Ghost. Both Volarend and Zephyroth have a hippogriff eagle type thing going on, which is where Zephyroth gets its name. Griff and Zephyr, which is a soft and gentle breeze. And also, the mythological Zephyr is the god of the west wind. Both are fitting of the wind typing. And Ruff could be from Ruffling Feathers. Or it's what they called those large collars during the Elizabethan era. Oh, and as for what a Sephiroth is, it's complicated. Basically, think of it as the spirit world. It's heaven. Though that is an extremely boiled down version of it, we don't really have time to get into it. Just know it's all high and angelic and stuff, which is why Sephiroth and Zephyroth perhaps reference it. Volarend is named after Volare, the Latin word for fly, and rent, meaning to tear or split violently, which those talons can definitely do. As for why it's toxic type, that's a bit of a hard one. Though, some birds are known to have neurotoxins in their skin, like the hooded patui. And also, in the case of these Temtem, they do have toxic gas clouds around them always, so it could very well just be that. Oh, here we go. Grumble and Grumper are two rock... things that don't look too happy. I'd say they look grumpy even, which is where Grumble gets its name. Gravel and Grumpy. Grumper also shares its grumpiness, however, it does not share its type, as it has added electric to its earth now, and its name has the word thunder. I think personally, Grumder would have been a wee bit of a better name if thunder was going to be the second part. But looking at them, what the heck are they? Oh gosh, do you remember that llama lima bean thing from like over a decade ago? Yeah, that thing. Grumble looks just like it, especially its luma color. But if it's not referencing this, the only other thing I could think of is like, a mud puddle with Minotaur horns? Huh. Maybe a stalactite? Hmm. Well, since this was another one specifically mentioned by the director, it's very likely to be another one they just started designing without any one thing in mind. They needed an earth electric type, so why not an electrified stalagmite? In the Temtem world, electrified horns are a common occurrence after all. I guess because they can work similar to tasers. Our next two Temtem have them also. Genki gets its name from the Japanese ga, which means moth, and denki which is an electrical current. That fits because this is a cute little electric moth, and it evolves into Gazuma. Ga, again, moth, and Inazuma means lightning strike. Also, they could be inspired by the static electricity butterfly experiment, popular in elementary school science classes. Osira is named after the ocean and, uh, a horse, I think. Be right back, going to ask the wife. Okay, so it turns out it could be named after the Miris Miris, which is a breed of horse in the Lord of the Rings. Though come to think of it, those river horses. Huh. Or it could just be a corruption of the word horse and ocean. ho sir ra o sir horse ra ho or But either way, they're based on water horses, aka Kelpies or Selkies. Or maybe there's a little bit of a Kirin in there. Yowler is a polar yeti thing. Specifically, one that lives in the Australian mountains, as there is a yeti-like creature in Australian folklore. It's named Yowie, which is in the name. Yowler. There you go. Nice. Dropley is named after a water droplet and baby, as it is small and childlike. And also, in-universe, it's seen as a crucial link in the evolution of Earthborn Temtem. But when it evolves into Gario, it's less useful as a science tool, but is still Newt-esque, living in mud. So water earth type is perfect, but it doesn't live in just any mud, but the mud around Lake Moyo, which is where that part of its name comes from. It's mixed with gregarious, and you can tell because its Tempedia entry says that it is very gregarious, which means sociable and likes company. And just look at that smile. The Eastern crystalline water dragon Shuin is also quite a bit Western. 
as an extra western, as it's also the feathered serpent from various Mesoamerican religions. You might know this one as Quetzalcoatl or Quetzalcoatl. However, this Temtem's name comes from pristine and shui, a Chinese word meaning water. So it's perfectly clean water, which is great because this Temtem is one big water filter. It cleans the toxins out of the water they inhabit so well that the water becomes safe for human consumption. Because we all know crystals are great at getting toxins out of things. Now Nestle, well that's just the Loch Ness Monster, isn't it? And possibly Tesla. It is water electric after all. It's if Nessie was an electric eel. Valiar's name comes from vacio, which means empty in Spanish, referring to the holes in its ears, and ampliar, meaning extends in Spanish, which refers to how it uses the empty holes in its ears to amplify its mental powers to extend them. Rabbits are often seen as intelligent and cunning, as are some goats, and Valiar to me seems like a mix of the two. But interestingly, a rare preauricular sinus birth defect causes a small hole in or around the ear, which spiritualists believe allows you to hear the voices of angels, as it makes you a clairsentience from birth. Maybe I'm looking too deep into this. Well, the Mayans used large jade ear flares to stretch big holes in their ears, which on top of just being a display of discipline and or wealth, the holes themselves were also seen as spiritual conductors. And having spirits connected to your mind would explain this Temtem's mental typing. Call a zoo. It's Azure Calamari because it's a squid and it's blue. Its evolution is Calibus. Again, Calamari, but this time from the dark abyss of the deep ocean, as plenty of squids are there. In fact, the colossal squid lives in the part of the ocean called the Abyssal Zone. This is also where a lot of those weird bioluminescent fish things live too, which are likely mixed in with this Temtem's design. Now, Adoraborus, I stinking love. It's based on the Ouroboros, a symbol featuring a serpent or dragon eating its own tail from the time of the ancient Greeks and Egyptians, though would go on to be used frequently as a symbol in alchemy. And this one's adorable! And that's how we get its name! An adorable Ouroboros! And considering alchemy was both scientific and spiritual, and alchemists often made poisons, toxic mental type is perfect. Whoa, and what's this? There's actually a fourth starter? It's Tawai, the toucan, which evolves into three other Temtem depending on where you evolve it. It's like Eevee, but a, a, a toucan. Why a toucan? Oh, probably because of the whole Darwin's finches things from the Galapagos. Famously, Charles Darwin documented all of these subtle and not so subtle differences in finches found on different islands, all within the Galapagos. It's one of those classic world famous bits of evidence of extreme animal adaptation and evolution. Finches are in fact boring, however, so they went with a toucan. Its name mixes toucan, or tucana, the Hawaiian word for toucan, and why, the Hawaiian word for juice. Toucans are known to crush fruits in their big beaks for juice, you see. If it evolves near the water shrine, it evolves into tukai, mixing toucan with kai, Hawaiian for sea. If brought to the sons of crystal, it evolves into two vine with its grassy vine. Just kidding, that's wrong, it's actually crystal type. It's named after minerals that end in veen, like olive veen, which has the same coloration as two vine. I mean, two veen. And finally, we have two rock, which it evolves into if brought to Aisha's hearth. It's earth type, thus rocky, thus its name. There's also a giant mythical bird, the rock, and two rock is the biggest of the three toucans. Hmm. The fairy-like Kinu is almost a myth due to its rarity. This information matters because Kinu is short for Kinushi, which is a Japanese forest spirit. You may think, wait, I thought those were called Kodama. And yes, you are right, but Kinushi is essentially a Kodama, but in the local dialect of Okinawa. But either way, they are all spirits of the forest, protectors, guardians, and you gotta have supernatural ESP ghostly spirit powers in order to protect such a large thing, hence the mental type. Volvir is named after Vulcan, the Roman god of fire who is also responsible for a lot of volcanoes. The name also pulls from Hevir, which is Spanish for boil, like soup, because he's got a little soup bowl on his head. Evolving into Valor, who has valor, causes them to lose the soup bowl. Unfortunate but they do get a spiky helmet instead. Now the latter part of its name comes from Calor, which is heat in Spanish. And finally, Vulcrane, from Vulcan and Cranio, the Spanish word for Cranium. Oh, and I see it now. These Temtem are based on the Pachycephalosaurus, the headbutt dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are often associated with volcanoes and earth in media, so you know, its typing's already perfect. <laughs> ah, pig epic. It is an epic pig. It's due to the saying, when pigs fly. Ha. Moving on. Arachnox. A noxious arachnid ox. 
Wow, that's a mix. It's based on an Akkadian mythical beast, the Acra Bwamelu. Basically a scorpion centaur. Horrifying. And fitting, since scorpions are ground-dwelling venomous arachnids. Koish! It's a koi fish! Koiish! Wow, what a name! Well, koi come in like a million colors and varieties, which would explain why this Temtem comes in all types. Volfi gets its name from Vulpin, the genus commonly known as Fox, and Fluffy, as it is Fluffy. It's a Kitsune, Kyubi, or Jiwehu, an eastern nine-tailed fox spirit. They play all sorts of roles depending on the folktale being told, but they are almost always mischievous nature spirits, which explains the earth nature typing well enough. Also, foxes burrow. <laughs> Earth. And finally, the big legendary Anahir. It gets its name from Rihanna backwards, as confirmed by the CEO of Crema on April 1st, 2020. Oh, it was a joke. Well, dang. The name actually is just derived from Anak and Terlahir, which means born in Indonesian. Anak being a region in Temtem that sports a big active volcano area, hence this thing being a volcano beast. It's man-made too. Hence the armor. It was an attempt at creating a new sort of diamond variety by combining various crystal type Temtem and submitting them to the power of the Anak volcano. It looks like a wingless lava griffin put in armor to me. What with the crystals and the shape of a tuft of tail feathers and like the mane sticking out and the talon, Structure? I'm not positive. The director to me used Anna here as another example of a design that was started without any one real thing in mind. Which honestly is really cool for a big man-made Temtem. And do you think the helmet looks like a sort of sci-fi version of a gladiator helmet? And also, I can kind of see parts of other crystal and even other Temtem in there. Hmm. But there you go! Every Temtem explained, at least to the best of my ability, in a way that is also greatly condensed. Big thanks to Crema for both making this game and also clarifying some things for me. And let me know if you think I missed anything big in the comments below. We usually do. And until next time, never stop using your noggin. What monster game are we going to cover next?